weight, so we decided to get up in the morning and run a 5K. And we had 25 people standing in the driveway. So the next year we did it, we had about 50. And as the story goes, it's easy to get 50 when you have the Stauber family over on the other side of the bay because they have six kids and their kids had six kids and it's basically, you could have a community church on Island Lake with that family. So the third year, one of our neighbors said, hey Stevie, if you are gonna keep doing this, let's throw a hat on the table, let's throw some money in it, and let's pick a charity. So on the fourth year, we started the Minnesota Teen Challenge Breezy Point 5K. First year we raised $2,600 and we thought that was a really, really good deal. I, I still think it's a good deal. And then it went to $5,000 and $7,000 and then $9,000 and $11,000 it just kept growing. And two years ago, because last year was kind of special, you know, we, we had kind of a rough year, I think our whole country did. We had shut down businesses and couldn't go to school and they stopped us from going to church. So two years ago, we raised $52,000 in yeah. the driveway. So then last year, we didn't know what to do. Boulder Dam Road was being re-blacktopped. The whole country was shut down. And I told my wife, Sandy, I said, listen, this doesn't stop. We gotta keep going. So we waited till the road was done, and on August 15th last year, Jody Lynn Miner's birthday, Jody Lynn, remember that? They sang happy birthday to you. We had our race. We limited it to 250 people, because we didn't want to get sued or get in trouble, or who knows what could happen. And last year we were hoping to have a good turnout and hoping to raise a lot of money. We had our cap at 250, we had another massive amount of people do it virtually, whether it was in their neighborhood on the Willermonger Trail or wherever it was. And last year, thinking we would not make as much, we raised $62,000. We have sponsors that I know Jason's read, but there are some special ones that I just want to go over. And I think it's really important um, and I don't want to miss any, so if I do, please correct me. But Matt Clifford is a friend of mine. He's not here today, but if you look on the back of the shirt, it says Galaxy Sales on it. And Matt Clifford, out of the kindness of his heart, because he knows how dear this is to me, donated $5,000 to this race today. Yeah. Kirk and Wendy Halderson, $2,500 for probably the third or fourth year in a row. Thank you. Darren and Denise Agenter from All-Star Service Center, $3,000 this year. I think I'm missing one. That's, that's a, oh yeah, Storage King, if you know where that is on Race Lake Road, that guy donated $2,500 as well. So that's, that's me. Anyways, somebody asked me, why Teen Challenge? Why not this charity? Why not that charity? This is where it gets a little tough for me to speak. Usually, I could talk to anybody for hours. I lost my brother to drugs and alcohol. And I believe that if he would have had the opportunity like these guys do, to go to Teen Challenge, he might be here today, but he didn't have that chance. See, we're gonna go out and the younger kids are gonna sprint. Us older guys, we're gonna run and think we're sprinting because it's gonna feel like a sprint. <laughs> but some are gonna walk and some are gonna ride their bikes. But it's just a little tiny short jaunt out to the, past the blacktop and back here. These guys have entered a marathon because their race is never going to stop. Amen. Right, guys? That's right. So when we're done today and we go to our cabins and we go to our 
Fourth of July fests and all these different things. These guys are going back to battle and to fight. And it's not easy. Last year I asked the head of Minnesota Teen Challenge, what is the success rate for these gentlemen that are fighting for their lives? And by the way, everybody in this crowd knows somebody that's either had a drug or an alcohol addiction. And it doesn't just affect one person. It affects families, it affects friends, it affects coworkers. It affects everybody in the community. And he told me the success rate for Teen Challenge was 67%. I find that amazing because it's the highest yeah. success rate of any treatment facility in the country. Yeah. So. Years ago, Sandy and I first got married, which is 17 years ago. Amen. And uh, we came home from a trip and I had a letter in the mail and it was from an old girlfriend. And so I opened it up and I read it and I said, Sandy, I think you should read this. And she was in Seattle Women's Teen Challenge. And she was asking for us to sponsor her because they can get sponsorships. And on our way home from our trip on the airplane, Sandy had a miscarriage. So we were, we were already just a wreck. And she read the letter and she said, we just lost a life. If we can help save a life, we're going to help Teen Challenge. And that's when we first started donating to Teen Challenge. And by the way, that lovely young lady, five years later, was at a Bible study. And she walked up to my wife and she said, are you Sandy Paulson? And Sandy said, yeah. And she told her her name and she gave her a big hug. And she told her that... She was the girl that we sponsored, and they've been friends ever since. And by the way, I won't say who her name is, but they are a thousand dollar sponsor in this race for her and her husband for the last five years. Again, I wanna thank everybody for coming and participating. I wanna thank everyone for their donations, for the volunteers, for all their help. Most of all, I wanna thank my lovely wife. Sandy, can you give us a wave? She's back underneath the little bigger wave. Come on. Leading up to this race, it's about two months of work before and about a month of work after. And the last week, it's, put it this way, I don't know if anybody knows what the Germans are like, but I'm going to tell you this. Me and my two daughters, we stay clear because it gets very intense and stressful to put this on and if it wasn't for sandy we wouldn't be doing it anymore because she does most of it i just go out and get money and i talk and then i'm done so thank you so much we're going to turn this over to pastor thor he's going to say a prayer then we're going to have the national anthem we have a wonderful singer this year and then we're going to start the race pretty special to uh, hear the story of Steve and he talked about addictions hitting every one of us. I grew up in a family in the central hillside uh, that was full of dysfunction and by God's grace in, skipping a little bit, in 1968 I had somebody ask, sorry I went too long and burned the batteries up. We're getting another mic. It's, it's on the way. Yeah, right. Come on, run. It's a 5K. Come on, run. <laughs> hey, can we get a new <laughs> Steve said he was going to play like he was running the race, and uh, I'm going to play like I'm walking the race. But I'm looking forward to it. But back to the hillside. People have asked me, I've been in ministry for almost 40 years, and they've asked me about miracles still happening. And I want to tell you the greatest miracle in the world is a person who is changed from the inside out by Jesus Christ. That's the greatest miracle in the world. And uh, after I became a Christian in July of 1968, 
I realized how many families were going through this. I'd never heard the word born again, but when I walked up 3rd Avenue East and A Street, after asking Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, I was a different person. When I walked up the steps, my mother said, are you on drugs or what? And I said, no, I became a Christian tonight. She said, it won't last. I tried it when I was a kid. That was 53 years ago. It's lasted. And it'll last for anybody that puts their trust in Jesus Christ. And we're excited about Teen Challenge. Uh, I can't imagine how many kids, they could be your neighbors going through the same thing. I remember holding my mother's wrist when she had a razor blade in one hand trying to end her life. Two years later, she was in church with me. God knows what he's doing, doesn't he? And so we need to pray for our neighbors. We need to invite them to our churches. And I want to thank Steve and Sandy for hosting this. Believe me, I know it's a lot of work. And, uh, and I had the privilege of marrying them 17 years ago. And Sandy, you deserve a medal, believe me. You deserve a medal. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on our time together. Father, thank you for this beautiful ministry. Pray for Teen Challenge, for all the people in it, that you give them great successes. They put their trust in you. Pray your blessing on each one here. Pray for no injuries today. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.